All right, hello, folks. Welcome to uh, Sunday Scrap Mechanic Stream. Hooray! Whoop de doo! Yippee! Oh my! The excitement! You can see it in my character's face. So excited! What's uh, I gotta even see what I'm doing today? I have the, my notes. Hello, M Reaper. You're at 200. Chonk Tech. Chonk Technologies sounds like an excellent company name. Right. Okay, I'm going to be building a drone thing today. That's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> I, I, I just had a little bit of a flashback of what was going on in this world last time. Alright. <clears throat> so, parts for the drone thing. I think I already have... Oops. Yeah, plenty of number logic stuff. I'm going to need those. Not this. Not this. Not this. Not this dish dish. Um, dish. It's gonna be like a remote control drone thing, similar similar to the stuff that I built in Plasma. But today I'm just sort of like working on the the, the very first prototype. Whereas the exometer is not listed under number logic. The dumb, <laughs> dumb, dumb search. Hello, Jacob. Get rid of this, we don't need that. Okay. Okay. The other stuff that I'm gonna need. Oh, I shouldn't have gotten rid of that, the, the, the vanilla, vanilla logic. I need that sometimes. Gimbal thruster. And the super heavy blocks. Blocks. You know, maybe the blocks don't matter. Maybe I don't need to weigh it down. If I... I don't think I have a... a suspension glitch? Stabilizer? St there it is. Stabilizer. Alright. The problem with this, though... I don't know what I can attach to it without it, like, breaking apart. You know? I can't really attach it... By the top. Well, that's fine, I guess. As long as it doesn't tilt. Uh, I want another one, though. Right? Can I stabilize this? Two stabilizers work um, for three dimensions, or which one am I grabbing? Just up. That doesn't look like a good thing to do, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Are you stable? You're pretty darn stable. Three-dimensional stability. That's good. Alright. Yeah, so now it just doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it rotates or tilts. That's good. That's good for me. So then we'll just build off this. Pole. 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 Do 4D stability. <laughs> well, I guess that's kind of what I'm building. If you saw the uh, drone light show that I built in the game Plasma, I'm... Well, to start off with, I'm just building a drone today. That's all I'm just going to be building today is just a drone. And then maybe another stream, I'll work on, like, having many of them in the same world and, like, performing a, a drone light show. But today, I, I just want to work on the actual design of the drone itself, which is going to be based on the other video that I had. I gotta go. I gotta go find that number. Oh my gosh! Just YouTube, take me to my channel. YouTube, why? Oh my God, YouTube, why are you so slow? <laughs> is my internet borking up right now? It's a video that I had on my channel that shows, like, the magic number is 3.818 something, 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 something. That's the number that I want. You... Oh my god, why, why are you doing this to me? Maybe my internet browser just borked up. Fine. Fine. I'll open it in another internet browser. I have four of them installed.
There it is. 3.8186377. <laughs> that's that's the only thing that I wanted. <laughs> okay. Because we can stick a mass meter on this. Mass. The mass of this thing. Sure, whatever. I'll just put it right here. Divided by... And then we put a number, and this number, first of all, should be black. Uh, and then is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's usually good enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so like seven decimal places should be uh, good enough. That's connected. I'll connect it up. So then you just stick it in here. Bada bing, bada boom. This is anti gravity. Don't, don't, don't fly away though. All right, so that's neutral lift force. Now, which by the way, this is neutral lift force based on the mass of the creation. That's why I built this thing, this is so important. It's not just this number put hooked into a gimbal thruster, it's a ratio for any mass. So I can just keep on adding weight. So let's go pull out those ridiculously heavy blocks, right? Ridiculously heavy, redonkulously heavy, to show you just how redonkulous it's going into the ground. It's so redonkulous. <laughs> so we can add a bunch of these, a bunch of them, right? That's still gonna, assuming it was connected. There you go. <laughs> and there's yeah, there's an issue with center of mass too. Because right now the center of mass is around here somewhere. Can I even hit this up? Oh, but you know what? My lift can. This, okay, these blocks. <laughs> Anyways, you can see, yeah, no matter the weight, uh, no matter the mass, the thrust force automatically adjusts based on what the mass is. What? I didn't save that. <laughs> I didn't save that. So I think what happened there was, um, the thruster was forcing with enough force for the mass that it had, but I deleted it. And in that split, uh, okay, all right, time to rebuild it. Ah, time to rebuild it. When's the last time that happened to me in Scrap Mechanic? Like a month. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that long that happens in scrap mechanic. <laughs> All right. Take this. Weld it to this. Well. Weld it to this. You're all stable, super stable, super duper stable. Okay. Now we can just uh, build off this. Same, same old, same old doohickey. Wait a second. These stabilizers suck. I mean, for super ridiculously heavy weight, they do anyway. Is that, is that block still going? Where is it? I never picked that up, did I? Yeah. That's... <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna try to keep this as lightweight as possible. Wait a sec, oh my god, you're it. That's <laughs> your... <laughs> Finally starting to make some really bad jokes like me. <laughs> it's great, <laughs> it's great. What is the weight of a second? Wait a second. All right, 
más. Uh. You know what? Yeah, it's fine. Well, actually, it's not fine. Ugh. Ugh. All right. All right. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Double. Um, what is this called again? Stabilizers. That's what it's called. Sta stable. State bills are. You stay Bilzer now. Keep, keep it Bilzer, folks. All right. Just get over here. <laughs> All right, here we go. One for this side. Take that on top. There we go. Get, just give me the thing. <laughs> All right, and then the one for this side. Yeah. All right, so there's a top and a bottom. The stabilizers are opposing each other equally. So that. What's the what's the block count between these? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Dang, it is not odd. <laughs> it is not odd. Um, we can fix that. What? I swear to God, scrap mechanic. Ugh, I, su I swear, I swear. I swear all the swear words. How do I... Okay, maybe I just gotta build it correctly the first time. Maybe that's the solution here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> okay. Eight. Nine. Oh my god, stop being scrap mechanic. If I put a thing there, and I put a thing there, there is a midpoint. So the stabilizer has to be under that. Buh. <laughs> you're gonna see, you're gonna see. When I actually finally get around to putting the other thrusters on this thing, the, the goal... Oh my god, I, okay, you know what? I need more of these dubla... Dubla stabilizers. It's gonna be a very responsive drone. So that's why it needs stabilizers in the first place. And not to, to tilt like it did earlier. Okay, you're attached. You're attached. You're, you're attached. You're good. You're attached. Good. You're atta that! I'm attached. Uh, yeah. Yeah, right here. Okay, you didn't, like, magically disconnect now? You did. You did magically disconnect. How did you do that? Why did you do that? Am I just not allowed? Maybe it's the... Attachment point. We'll grab it from here this time. Somehow that changes things. Nope, it does not. What? I can't even delete this. There we go. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter, I guess. I can just attach it this way. Hmm. Hmm. Save it, it's a rare bug. What do you mean, like, just saving it on my left is gonna fix it? Because, like, the bottom's working just fine. 
maybe it's because of the the the, the gimbal thruster is like in the way. I don't think so though. Let's get a few just in case I mess up again. On my left. But there was a funny joke for Scrap Mechanic Twitter. Huh? I think I just read something completely out of order and context. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Just let me delete you. Why are you dancing? <laughs> Why? What? The physics in this game? Just. Yeah, yeah. What is this? What? All right, scrap mechanic. Whatever. 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 It's the place where you weld it. Um, the place where I weld it. What? But this one works just fine. I'm gonna try the 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 least amount of connection possible. Okay, that seems to work until I take it off my lift, but let's save it. Like you said, saved drone thing. So far, it seems to be all in one piece. All right, all right, all right. I never entered the numbers into this, did I? Good. That means I can reposition it. Okay. One, two, three. You know, I think I might have... Uh, well, you know what? I don't know how that reacts anymore. <clears throat> I, you know, I think it'll be fine. I think I was just accidentally dividing by zero there. One, two, three, four, five, six. What? What? Wait, wait, wait. What did I even press? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. Oops. Oh, no, I did four. Oh, my God. I'll just do it again. <laughs> okay, I gotta go get this number again because I don't have it. Why the heck is... One of my browsers just completely borking up on me. Okay, 3.8186377. One, two, three. I clicked it. Oh my god, I'm a, such a dingus. Zero, okay. One, two, three. Don't click it again, but paint it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, that's the number. That's in there. Let's also. Can I can I just can I just climb up real quick, real quick? Real quick, let me climb up. <sighs> I don't know why I just didn't hop on this before. There you go. There you go. So that should be wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Before I go anywhere with this, actually. And before I hook that up like that. We're gonna put uh, just a good old plus block right here. Okay, so this plus block is gonna be what controls the up down of the drone. And now we're gonna do the left, right, forward, back. This is all bit, yeah, so we're just, we have a, like a weightless drone and then we can add or subtract a positive or negative number just to push it up or down from 
weightlessness. So that's good. What is the ratio? What do you mean, what is the ratio? Oh, hey, Reito. Press U on the counter. Oh, you know what? I, I, I always forget about that. U is a very inconvenient button to press. This was, like, definitely one of those things where I would have told them... <laughs> don't use the U key. You can just give the, the E menu the thing. But you can't take away any existing functionality. I'm telling... I don't even... Uh, I don't want to get into it again and again and again. But, like, it's small things like that that results... Okay. The thing that I said, where it's inconvenient to just press U to open the GUI to enter this number. This is not even the number that I entered in. This is wrong. This is another issue with this, too. This, this <laughs> string value is just wrong. I definitely did not enter that number in. Oh. Okay, <laughs> in my attempt to explain one reason why <laughs> there's even <laughs> there's even mod pack drama, I end up finding another one. Like my goodness, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, okay, thrusters, number logic thrusters. That's what I. That's what I'm missing. Thrust, thrust, thrust. They're not blocks. Ish one. I suppose this one could work too. Ah, this is sort of easy for four directions, single block. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding. Okay, there you go. Ugh. You're not supposed to be able to. Well, it doesn't matter if. Why are you acting weird? <laughs> it's whatever, whatever, whatever. Easy thrusters. There you go. Number logic thrust. Get back here. Get back here. Get back here. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. All right. So I have an up down control. Um, let's see now. No, it would be better with the with the other thrusters, wouldn't it? Because these are only positive thrust. This one, on the other hand, was designed to be negative thrust. This is also very stupid, the way that I built this. So one sort of like top left, and this one will be bottom left? I don't know. It doesn't really matter as long as they balance out. There you go. So now I can feed these thrusters. I mean, I don't need the two, two for each. I only needed the one for each, but whatever. Balance. So now I can feed in. Oh, wait. Are they even pointing the same direction? <laughs> this is something I didn't test. Switch and a number value to test. Well, the default power is uh, like 100 anyway, I think, right? Let's put a switch. So these two thrusters, we can give a power value of 100, which is default anyway, and that would make the thing spin. Cool. And then negative 100. Wouldn't you know it? Spins the other way. So I gotta, I just gotta flip two of these. But the thing is, I don't know which way they're flipped. 
which way is which? Ugh. <laughs> These scrap mechanic. Okay, there. This u didn't used to be a problem. Same with the ASCII block. Right here. When you place this down, usually you would see the ghost image with, uh, with a, like there was a 3D model. It's the same thing with the uh, number logic parts too. You can't see through a surface anymore in the ghost image, right? There's like 3D details in there for the logic gate, but you can't see it from this side. You used to be able to, and uh, mod makers took advantage of that with the ASCII block, for example, where you put this down and you get one, two, three, four, five. But like, see, you can't see that it's sideways. This model actually has an internal um, letter, the, the letter A, just right side up the letter A relative to how the picture comes out. So when you're placing it down, you can rotate it so that it, you know, it, it's the correct way. You can see how it's oriented when you're placing it down. The recent scrap mechanic updates took away that functionality entirely. You can't use the ghost image anymore in that way. And it just completely broke some mods. And this, this thruster is one of those mods, because it used a, just like some other parts, it had an invisible arrow that you would be able to see that pointed to the forward direction, the positive number direction. I think another part is the Halloween Skull Launcher. This is just a, a, a plain old sphere, so you can't exactly tell. Yeah, what? This doesn't even make sense. Because the 3D model for this one has an invisible arrow, like a three-dimensional arrow, that comes out of the sphere to show which direction the, the skulls launch out of. Alright, I can just hook it up real quick. Okay, yeah, so they just shot out that way. From the right side. I don't even know where the skull went. Oh, it's coming back. <laughs> there it is. And also there are animations messed up too. Man, these game updates break so many awesome stuff. But like, you see my point though, like the, this doesn't even make sense. The invisible, the, the, the 3D model has an arrow in it to show the direction it comes out. <laughs> Why take away that functionality? Why may, it's just blah, blah, these developers. So I got to place this thruster down in several orientations without ever touching, oh look, there you go. This side's good to go. Without ever touching my Q key, my rotate key. Oh, I don't even need the switch. All right, so that's the negative. That, you know, this is another problem too though. Which way is positive and which way is negative? I'm, I need, I need to make sure of that before doing this too. Like this. Pretty sure that's the X axis, so one of them is going to be greater than the other. This is the Y axis, yes, because altitude is Z. Not the hundreds place, not the thousands place. Negative 30 something. Negative 33, negative 36, that seems about right. In blocks. 0.5. Okay, so for the Y direction, that way is positive. And this is a negative number being fed into the thrusters. But that should be positive, not negative. So I gotta spin those thrusters around. So that I can use positive numbers to go in a positive direction, if that makes sense. Flip, flip. That's, wait. I'm using negative numbers to go in a positive direction. I'm a dingus. I had it. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot that counter was set negative. What? Wait. What am 
whatever. <laughs> There's no pitch roll or yaw. We're just translating a, a, a drone around. That is definitely not the right way. Okay, negative number, higher and higher negative number goes negative Y. Good, 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 good. All right, what is this? Negative X. Oops. Okay, 136. 140. That seems about right. So that direction's positive. So that's an okay thruster, because we're putting negative into it. We gotta go negative direction. Good. Good, 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 good. Um. Where do I put that? Down here? Not good. Good. There we go. That is good. Okay. <clears throat> so this, let's just go ahead and paint blue. I don't think it changes anything with the thruster up there. We're gonna have... I guess, uh, stick one there, stick one there. Red, green. Okay, so green, wait, red? Red is X, which is this and this. There you go. RGB signals, positive, negative numbers to remotely control a drone. We can use wireless transmitters, boop, boop, boop. But I'm not going to. Well, you know what? I will, I will. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna save this first before I lose it. Saved drone thing. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Uh, you know what? Let's also just do the wireless signal stuff. Receive, receive, receive. Blue. Green. And red. <clears throat> All right. Now, now what I want to do with this, these are some inputs. I'm going to send out a number. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, what, what number do I want to send out? I want to send out a number... Yeah, sure, why not? 10,000. Okay. Now I want the negative of this number. The tick after it. So, this is what I'm going to do. We do multiplication. We multiply this with this. Hmm. Nah, let me let me think this over. We need to do a negative here. And then just put it both in a plus. So sending out the number ten thousand for a single tick and then the number negative 10,000, the tick after it. I can't even see that. Or I think they just canceled out. 
What? It shouldn't cancel out. In one tick. It should be zero. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, they, they are canceling out. I'll just delay this signal for one tick. Okay, you know what? I don't even know anymore. <laughs> Did I even put a number in this? Oh, and it's the correct number this time? So, 10,000. The next tick, this is gonna be 10,000. Or it's gonna get 10,000, and this is gonna get 10,000 to be negative 10,000. You should be saying 10... Did I just never connect this? I never connected it. Oh! The levels of dingitude. <laughs> yeah, you guys noticed the chat too? Oh my god. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so then I probably don't need to delay this a tick then. I see the negative. I don't see the positive. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's 10,000 and then negative uh, 10,000. The very next tick. That's good. That's that's the type of signal that I want. I just don't know the number yet. So we're just gonna take all this out, out of here and feed that right into X and see what happens. There's my floating drone. I guess, uh,. I didn't connect these either. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Hey, look at that. Very responsive drone looking good. Very, this is what I was building the, the whole time right now. This is what I was aiming for. A drone that you can control, translate in position, but like very quickly, very, very quickly. So now we can adjust the number for distance per tick. And now we can get a new magic ratio between the mass of this <laughs> the mass of this drone and how much force it takes to push a certain a single block. And then we can, you know, graph that and get an equation. And then uh, if I wanted to move it, you know, 54 blocks in the x direction and 7 blocks in the y direction in a single tick, it will just go boop in a single tick. I'm doing this all in a single tick because uh, if I'm gonna be building a remote control station like this and like programmatically control a drone light show, then each drone has to follow a mathematical formula. They have to get there as quickly, as, they have to get to their target's location as quickly as possible. So with this level of like control and precision, I it, it's, it's much better than a, a drone that has to like accelerate and decelerate calculate deceleration like blah um yeah and i think i want to build more of these i don't think i need any of this stuff anymore down here we can just cut it out Um, I'm gonna cut this off too, actually. Okay, so that's an important piece. This is not. And then this is what I want to save. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know, I don't even know what to call this. Button force push thing? Like, I'm never gonna remember what that's called later. But I know that I have it. Alright. Three to, to get me started. Did not need it to be that big.
Whatever, man. So this is all just a prototype test anyway. Oh, you know what? I didn't need any extra tick delay here. There we go. Now I can just adjust these numbers for the test of how we control this thing. Alright, so I think they're all set to uh, 10,000, so if I were to try the Y value... Wait, what? Wait, what? Stop. Wh where are you going? Stop. Where are you going? What? What are you doing? I'm an idiot. I'm pressing the wrong... Okay, whatever. It's... It's... <laughs> it was the other button. I gotta... I gotta... Uh, I gotta go get that. How do I go get that? <laughs> it's a, uh, maybe my magic number is a little bit too high? Too low? I was pressing the, the wrong number the whole time. Yes, mission accomplished. I cannot use anti gravity because uh, the thruster is on on the drone, so it'll be just thrusting further and further away from me in anti gravity. I suppose I could have just put an anti gravity module on my drone. And then just done thrusters like these for for all the dimensions. Now ah, see, look, it looks fine. I think the problem with my drone is momentum. Yeah, if I press up, it's just gonna keep going because it has apparently a lot of momentum. But taking it off the lift, it sinks down, resting. That's when it finally doesn't move. Okay, yeah, so it is the right number. It is the right, correct magic ratio. Okay, well, let's test this by pressing the correct buttons this time. The X. Boop. Y. What the heck happened there? It is going in the positive direction, but why is it going down? Oh, it's the darn stabilizers. They're not stable. You can see the gimbal thruster is doing its job too. Boop, 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 boop. So if I increase this to like 10 times the amount, it should move 10 times the distance. And stop. Yeah, you see that tilt? Stabilizers are not doing their job. Uh, Alright, well another design that I had in mind was to use the um, these ridiculously heavy blocks. And the the same gimbal thruster design, just on top. So like, it's a very, very, very heavy drone. But the, the upwards force is like, always, it's naturally going to want to stay upright. The problem then becomes if, you know, where do I put the thrusters? I guess it just has to have, you know, have a center point. Balance. But I don't know how to balance... Like, it makes sense to balance, you know, if a thruster force in the middle like this. But it changes the inertia of the, of the parts when there's a thruster force pulling it constantly upwards.
I don't know. Like, the bottom's gonna move easier than the top would. But I don't know by how much. This darn tilt. Okay, so... Move the drone up. Hmm, there's another way that I can build this drone too. And that's with uh, GPS positioning. Which is a lot more similar to what I did in Plasma. In Plasma, I did... The drone has, uh, like, its own XY... XYZ position. And here... On this thing, I would tell it a target to XYZ position. Boop. Boop. You, you know, you know what it is. And then I... Basically, on the drone, I just have... A subtraction. From the current and the target. And that number directly goes into the thruster for that axis. So, like, I'm 50 blocks away negatively from my target, you know, in the X direction. Pump in 50 units into the thrust for that direction. Maybe, like, with a multiplier, I don't know, maybe it needs to be 50,000 or something. But, like, that's, that's the, uh... <sighs> Stupid drone. <laughs> Stupid drone. <laughs> I think it's better to do it this way, though. Because then I wouldn't lose the drone. It would just constantly be trying to go to its target position. I still want to do this uh, extremely forceful thrusting. Um, because I guess that just comes down to acceleration time, right? How many ticks is it going to take to get to its target position? How many ticks is it going to take to stop, slow down and stop? So yeah, this, this stuff that I was doing where you saw, like, I can basically teleport it to the side a very tiny amount, or a lot. Um, if it's, like, half a block away from its target position, it'll teleport the half block. A tiny amount. I think I'm, I, I think I'm okay here. What about a big bomb to end of video? What? I just... <laughs> Dare if I posted a meme in my community tab about you? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I look over at chat after a while of not looking at it, and I'm lost. Alright. Drone. Didn't know that I have teleportation skills, too. So I think the 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 the, 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 the issue that I need to oh my god I gotta stop bumping into it by accident. All right, glass. gonna do a little bit of testing here and it has to be a single axis well I mean it could be more but I don't want to mess up my test you know okay so in here <clears throat> um, let's let's put a uh, ice <laughs> I don't think I had to walk all the way around just to push this up here, but whatever. <sighs> Freaky deaky. Just get back in here.
Okay, I think this is gonna be good enough. All I really gotta do is just see... Oh, you know what? I might as well put a thing right here. I don't wanna add a roof. Blech! I don't wanna add a roof. But I should probably add, like, a door. For me. Okay, this thing needs a... exposition. Okay, we're gonna be measuring that. Stop flying away just because I bumped my head. Okay, so when I press the bouton, when I press the bouton, some people really like it when I speak French. You know, bonjour, Jamapple Durf, and whatnot. Um. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think we're good. So I now I can do the testing of teleporting it over, and I wanna I, I need to get a ratio of what these numbers actually are. So, and then I'm gonna graph them. Oops, graph them. And this graph is also gonna be terrible because. I'm changing the mass of my thruster. So it needs to involve the mass value. <laughs> Alright, well I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do too much testing and stop flying away! How, where do I build it? So I'll build it. No, that's not the block that I. Oh! <sighs> I thought it was a wood block that I was placing down. <laughs> not this heavy stuff. <laughs> it's so dumb. Where, where, where? Drone, get back here, you. Get back here, you. There we go. No! <laughs> it's no! I'm, I'm... I'm gonna teleport on you, whether you like it or not. Where are you, Drone? There you are. Yes, yes, yes. No! Yes. Okay, okay, okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. There we go. Got it. <laughs> okay. There we go. This is why you need a remote kill switch. You know, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, wood block. Some display blocks. Okay, and I think we're in the hundreds place. So positive or negative, 100, tens, blah, 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 decimal, decimal, decimal. All right. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now let's get this thing all the way over there. Don't start going up. At seven seventy nine point five. Seventy nine point five. Okay, so precisely ten thousand. 
precisely 10,000 takes us from 79.5 to 82.2. Also, I got a cat. One sec. Okay. Now let's get uh, the difference there. I gotta write this down somewhere. I gotta write this down. It was 79.5. And the new number is 80, 80 what? 82.2. Okay, which basically means 2.7 blocks was traveled for 10,000 units of force. Okay, just, just go over here for a second. So I can put you back down here. All right, back to 79.5. This time, we're doing 20,000. You gotta be, what even happened? Get my drone. You know, maybe I do need a kill switch, but I'm stubborn. And somehow I think this time I'm totally not gonna. Wait, how did I teleport way above my drone? Oh. It, 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 it. Get, get the left, get the left. There we go. All right, try that again. Get the data, the data, the data, 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 data. Here we go. 84.95. So that's 5.45. And what was the other one? 2.7? Okay, so it's... It, so far it looks like a linear relation. That is just the more force you add, the, the more distance you travel. Meaning, 10,000 for 2.7 blocks. It's like a direct linear ratio. So, one more test. To see if it is in fact linear or not. Uh, we're gonna clear this, and we're just gonna go straight up to... Yeah, straight up to 10 times. So then this should be a difference of 27 blocks, if it's linear. There we go. What happened to my music? Oh my god. <laughs> I, th I, I, I seriously think something's wrong with my internet. What the heck's going on? My stream is still good though, right? What? I have to restart my entire browser. Derf should read chat. Okay, well, apparently chat's still working, but nothing else. I know. There we go. We got the we got the music working. Uh, 
I don't know. All right, last test. Uh, you're in position, good. Okay, you're set to 10 times, good. Did the music stop again? D what the heck? You know what? Fine, fine, fine. Chrome doesn't want to play nice. I'll use another web browser. There's seriously something wrong with <laughs> with my Chrome right now. What? Anyway, it's, it's not important. I can reach at at least. All right. Get this. Uh, get this off the thing here, and then quickly push the button for the test for ten times the distance. Boop. That doesn't seem like a good test. I don't know. Uh, let's just get this number anyway. What is it? 108? 0.64. Wait, what was the other number? 79.5. This is 108. Point. Six four. Twenty nine. Okay, so it was supposed to be twenty seven, but it's twenty nine. Very interesting. Interesting. Okay, so it's slightly uh not I mean it is a from what I can tell, it is a linear relationship, but it's like, um, what is it, like 1.2 times? The more distant, or like, what, what am I even trying to say here? I need to figure out how to get the precise number for a block. And it's not 2.7, um, times less, what, what, okay. 10,000. If you were to split it into 2.7 and just get one of those sections, <laughs> that's that's the number that should be for a single block. I mean, dividing by 3 is pretty easy. Right? Let's do 3,000, 333. I'm not even doing that. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So that number, 1086, okay, 10865. 10865, hit it again. 10955, that was supposed to be a 65. Almost got it down to like a single block, but if I can get a single block, theoretically I can get any number of blocks. But that, that's the this is another magic number that I need to figure out to get, um, I guess, super teleporting control of my drone. I'm, I gotta say, I'm already fried my brain on this. If Durf was cool, he would reach at Kern. Patrick says, giraffe emoji, cup of duck. Kern. All right. <laughs> uh, let me let me see my notes here. I think. Do I have? Uh, 
Oh, you know what? The the other thing that this was supposed to lead to was like rebuilding my old pod racer build. Cause like if I can control this is basically a hover pad. Or like one corner of a hover pad. Or, you know, one engine of a pod racer. I could work on that uh, reaction wheel thing that I was working on before. Let's see, what else do I got? Nope, nothing there. <laughs> All right, I just I was reminded of another creative writing thing that I'm doing. Oh, I could build another game. There you go. That's something else that I could do. I could build another mini game. Very simple stuff. You want to just get rid of this? I don't want it. Years. There you go. <laughs> it looks like the exact same thing, but uh, it's different, I swear. Okay, so for this game, I already got bored about uh, my drone and I'm working on something else. This game... You know, I don't even think that I need that. Whatever. Whatever. What's the precision on uh, counters? 40 seconds, 40 ticks per second, right? So if I do, well, this is, this is just gonna say the number, but. Okay, so down here I can do uh, 40 over 60. Which is really just 4 over 6 anyway. Put that into a multiplier, and that's gonna give me what this actually is. Wait, is that how it works? Or it should have been 60 over 40? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm so brain fried right now. D to be the time, like in seconds. So two, three ticks is not two seconds. How do I, oh my God, what is the conversion rate for ticks in seconds? <laughs> I know it's, I know it's 40 to, do I just divide by 40? Is that it? That's all I gotta do, right? Just divide by 40. I'm being a dingus. That's what I'm being right now. That's what I wanted to see. So one tick is 0 0.025 of a second, which makes sense, because four of those makes a tenth of a second. So 40 of those makes one second. I'm a dingus sometimes. But anyway, that's the, that's the level of precision for a display that I need. <laughs> oh man. So this game, I think you guys might already know about it. It basically... You push a button, and I guess a thing will, uh, a light is gonna turn on to sh tell you that it's the, the game's going. And uh, then you press the button again to stop. And when you stop, then the game's over. And you will have counted a certain amount of ticks. 
and then you're going to be either closer or farther away from 10 seconds, but all without seeing any timer. You just gotta count in your head 10 seconds, closest to 10 seconds. If you land on exactly 10 seconds, you win the big jackpot or whatever. But if you don't, then you can sort of like get a score of how close you were, just by doing some simple subtraction. So, so the target, the target, the target, the target, is, um, 10 sec- is- wait, 4- wait, what? 10- 400 ticks, right? Ten seconds, four hundred ticks. Yeah. So it's basically just a game. How good is your internal timer to count up four hundred ticks exactly? Jeff, do you remember the Jiggle Physics stream you did a while back? I, I think so. Make a game where you have to finish... Wait, what? Make... Make a... Make a game. You have to finish to solve a part of escape room. What? <laughs> what? Okay, so this thing, I think... It'll go... Turn on. That does that uh, count up the counter? I think it does. Cause it's a one. Yeah, it totally does. All right. Oh yeah, and I guess the reset button's also good too. Although it will maybe help somebody cheat a little bit, but okay. So you do that. You count up the counter, then when you stop, basically when this thing is off, and not equal to this thing is not equal to a zero. So the game has been played. Then we just take the multiple of that and show... Well, I suppose we could just do it here. <clears throat> yeah, and now we just uh, do a little uh, subtraction. Ten thousand minus this. Oops, not like that. Not like that. There you go. The, the, I sh shouldn't put my logic on the floor like that. Okay. This up here is also not necessary anymore. Not needed. Get out of here. I mean, we could use that display, I guess. Sure, why not? Just use it. To see if you win or lose by how many... How many seconds? Wait. That's gonna be in ticks, though. Oh, I just deleted the... The darn... Divided by 40 thing. <laughs> okay. Let's put another one. <sighs> yeah, disconnect all this. And connect it all here. Okay, so this is gonna be the measure in seconds. 
I suppose I could also just add another one for ticks. God, whatever, whatever, whatever. Fine, I'll just add this one for ticks. <laughs> so get, I'm getting frustrated at... Uh, nothing. Okay. Play the game, play the game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I was 1.5 seconds off, or 63 ticks. Mmm. See, now, now I need to display for what my actual time is. Divide by that. Eight point four, really? Well, yeah, that's one and a half seconds away. I just thought it would, I, I don't know. All right, well, clear the game. Give it another go then. Okay, so this game, it's already done, I think. It's just a simple game that uh, you might see from place to place. Some places have it, I don't know where exactly. I've never seen one myself. But the, the game, they make a bet with you, like you can win $100 if you get if you push the button, you wait exactly 10 seconds, and you push the button again. And there's a timer that's timing you down to like the millisecond. So usually these games are much harder than what Scrap Mechanic can do, because there's only 40 ticks in a second in Scrap Mechanic, it's 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 a little bit too easy. But um, normally it's like within a thousandth of a second, like just milliseconds. So you gotta get 10.000 to win the money. If you get 9.999, you don't win. If you get 10.001, you don't win. So it's it's one of those kinds of games. And it's just an internal timer test. So nothing's shown while it's going. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press. And I think one trick to get it is to think of yourself saying the word steamboat. So if you just do, oh, and you gotta count from zero and then end on 10. Because if you say zero steamboat, one steamboat, two steamboat, three, then three, the, the second that you say the word three is when the timer actually says 3.00. The steamboat is for all of the other milliseconds before the timer says 4.00. Anyway, <laughs> so it's like zero steamboat, one steamboat, two steamboat, three steamboat. Oh, the timer is showing right there. I'm a dingus. We gotta, we get, we, <laughs> we gotta get that. We gotta get that uh, between a multiplier like this. That's no good. <laughs> Literally showing them how to win. So that times both of these. The game has to be over to show their timer. All right. Some people use the word Mississippi, but it depends on if you even can pronounce that quickly enough to, you know. All right, so. <clears throat> Make sure it's clear. Zero steamboat, one steamboat, two steamboat, three steamboat, four steamboat, five steamboat, six steamboat, seven steamboat, eight steamboat, nine steamboat, ten. I was a little slow. Yeah, by one, 1. 1.4 seconds. I think I slowed down my steamboats by trying to enunciate. But you can, you can see how it's, uh, 
betting plus impossible, timing plus scam. Yeah, yeah. They, that's you, anytime that you go and you see those arcade games where you think that you can win, they're built to make money. Don't fool yourself into thinking that like, haha, I'm gonna strike big or whatever. Lottery machines and, and everything like that, slot machines, they're built so that statistically speaking, all the attention, all the eyes are drawn to when somebody wins the jackpot, so that all of those eyes and attention are spent spending their money, creating another jackpot. Like it's not, don't, don't, it, 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 like 100% recognize those things as a scam. But it doesn't mean that it's not fun. It's not, it's not like, you know, whatever, man. It's, if it's like, it, you know, 10 bucks to play, who cares? <laughs> Sometimes it's even free to play. Like who, who cares, right? It's a little fun, fun little thing. Make another counter that counts slower to troll the player. <laughs> I could totally do that. I could totally do... Uh, it's, it's, you know what, actually even more evil. Even more evil. Random. It has to be a very subtle range. It has to be a very, very subtle range. So I'll take this random number which is between 0 and 1. And I'll divide it. I'll, I'll just use multiply. Divide is a little bit of a pain to set up sometimes. But multiplying by 0.00 whatever is the same thing as dividing. So a very small number. Let's see what that number actually is. Oh yeah, it's not gonna, it's not even gonna show past the digit that I painted, I think. Right, like that would be the highest digit. Okay, so whatever digit I put in here, I basically push the random number smaller and smaller. So if I put a purple in here, or the, the pink, I mean, press it again. Sorry. Reset, there you go. Now I press it, nothing's gonna be above the pink digit. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, this is how I can get a very small number. I think this is small enough. So then this number can be like uh, 0 0.01, right? So we can actually take this. Truly an evil setup right here. So that minus Half of this, which is 50 of these. I mean, five of those. Okay, so that minus that, and that's gonna give us a positive or negative random number that is very, very small. Very, very small. So then this positive number, we just add onto one. Did I say positive number? Just this random change. It's positive or negative some random amount. So now you're gonna see when we create our super evil thing down here. Oops, not that one. Did I actually put a one in you? There you go. This can be like a, a, a multiplier that we add on to the speed of the timer. And that's why it has to be very subtle. Because you don't want somebody to notice, oh, that, that timer is twice as fast, or oh, that timer is twice as slow. You want it to, you, you, you don't, you know, if you make it 1.03 times as fast, that's going to mess them up, and they're not going to notice. You know what I mean? That's, that's, the, that's the evilness here. And making it random makes it that much more evil. Shouldn't that be a 1? There's a 1. One, two. Oh, right, 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 right. Because it's a negative number going into it. Right. Okay. So make sure it's one. So 
So right now the multiplier is 0.99521. Five. <laughs> For all I know, it keeps going. <laughs> uh, but then, yeah, the instead of counting at one times the speed, 99.5% of the speed, and then the next game, 99.69, 100% of the speed? No, no, it's 100.066. Oh my god, this is so evil. <laughs> this is so evil. <laughs> Alright, well, let's try it out. Let's try it out. It just has to go right here. This thing... into a little multiplication, like this. All right, so this is gonna be a little bit slower. It doesn't matter, because I suck at this game anyway, but whatever. Dude, I was so bad. And because it's slower, I forgot I forgot it to even count slower in my head. How do I count at 99.9% the, the speed of time in my head? <laughs> this is so dumb. This is a hard enough game as is. I'm not doing this. <laughs> oh, jeez. I'll just cut this off. Save it for later or something else. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. But this game, I think, is done and good to go. Ready to pack up and stick on the Steam Workshop. Okay. Zero Steam Boat, one Steam Boat, two Steam Boat, three Steam Boat, four Steam Boat, five Steam Boat, six Steam Boat, seven Steam Boat, eight Steam Boat, nine Steam Boat, ten! Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I wouldn't have won the prize, but within 27 ticks, for for counting 10 seconds in your head, like counting one second in your head, pretty easy. 10 seconds though, I don't know. And then as soon as you get to a minute, like, good luck. Yeah, it gets harder and harder to keep track of time that precisely, just in your head. So anyway, what do I call this? What is this game called? I have no idea what it's actually called, but I know it exists and it has a name. Press Orange Chick Bouton to start the game. Um, uh, si silently? You can count out loud if you want. I don't know to be silent. Just count. No, wait. Just wait for 10 seconds to... Wait for... Precisely 10 seconds to pass. Um, yeah, I guess the goal is to... Yeah, I think that's enough. Name idea, Time Killer? Time Killer? Time... To... Kill Time. With the Timer... Killer. Kill time. Alright. Time killer. <laughs> the, the almost amount of effort that I put into giving that a name. <laughs> it just makes me laugh sometimes. <laughs> Call it button pressing timing mania. Precise deluxe edition. Wow. That... <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I want people to actually play with this, not run away from it. <laughs> Shit. Uh, just time killer, whatever. Share it on the workshop. If you, yeah, if you want to play around with it, modify it, build your own. 
This item is awaiting analysis by our automated content check system. Blah blah blah. The Steam Workshop's getting worse and worse. Make it public. Alright. Derf game idea, like one of those hammer games where you hit a button and the thing goes up, but instead of hitting it hard, the faster you press the button, three consecutive times, the more strength. I'm not sure I even know what you're talking about, to be honest. Hey Derf, can I submit some creations to you? You sure can. Everybody that's in the Discord. By the way, everybody that's uh, watching here right now, I have a, a, an event going on Discord that I didn't actually ping at here or at everyone. I probably should just do a little at here, ping hundreds of people at once. It's been a while since I've done that. But anyway, <clears throat> we have a little event going on uh, where we're creating some Steam cards for Scrap Mechanic. Steam trading cards. Hey, Derf, I got banned from your Discord. Can you unban me? Uh, maybe? I mean, whatever got you banned in the first place. You know, okay, COG, Inc., you were probably banned for a reason, right? If I go and I unban you now, is that reason going to repeat itself? That's basically the... It, like, if you can assure me that it won't, or just, you know, trip... It's not, it's not like my Discord's super strict on the rules or anything, right? Like, you were probably just trolling or, you know, pasting a link to, to, to some video or something in the wrong channel or something. Because, like, there's a channel where people can, like, promote their own stuff, right? But if you try to promote your stuff in the wrong channel, you're just disrupting other people then. Anyway, check out the Discord. There's a contest where we're creating Steam trading cards for Scrap Mechanic. A lot of games have Steam trading cards. You can get them. They just sort of, like, uh, I don't know, drop after a while that you play the game. You have them in your Steam Marketplace inventory. So this is where you can get gifts. Um, for, like, you can purchase a game as a gift, or you can have items from games. I think, uh, Golf with Your Friends, um, has a lot of Steam items. Like, they have an entire Steam marketplace for customizations. Like, a custom hat that you can buy for, like, five cents. Um, so then you can get, like, a super rare item, like a legendary hat for your golf ball. And that goes for, like, oh my god, it's a dollar fifty. But, uh, anyway, trading cards is a thing that a lot of games have. Except for Scrap Mechanic. Scrap Mechanic doesn't have it. So check out the post on Discord and uh, get involved in the... in. The, it's not really a contest, but um, I'll be checking them out in a video when... when... Uh, when... Uh, later. I'll be checking them out in a video later. So there's plenty of time for you to, to make whatever you want as your own trading card and... Yeah, I'm looking forward to checking out the ideas. But same thing for uh, Blueprints. There is a forum channel in my Discord for Scrap Mechanic. Um, my my Discord right now is a little bit confusing. I'm thinking about like changing things up a little bit and, and sort of like redoing it all from the ground up. But uh, right now it's a little bit confusing. Just go to the Scrap Mechanic forum, make a post with whatever you want to share with me and make sure it's tagged as Blueprint. I can go into the forum and filter for all the Blueprints. And then the, when I'm actually checking out Blueprints, I'll just check them out one by one. So that's how you can submit your blueprints to me. Same thing with challenges and, and anything else related to Scrap Mechanic. It's now a forum post that you just put a little tag. You tag it as a challenge, tag it as a blueprint. And it's not just me that'll check it out, but like anybody else in the Discord that wants to check out, you know, the, the, the latest blueprints that somebody shared. <coughs> But yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at uh, unbanning you after my stream today. You hit a pad with a hammer and a bell or something goes up. Classic carnival game, but you can hit with strength and scrap mechanic. Oh, can't. But you can, actually. Here, let me show you. How do you get strength out of a hammer hit? Well, it's actually very easy to show you with a ball. Does this ball roll? Alright, roll's good enough. So I can just show you with two of them.
full strength. That's going places. Weak strength. Super weak. <laughs> I didn't even hit it. It did roll, but you can't you can't really see it. But uh, basically, pointing down doesn't actually hit it downwards. It just reduces the force horizontally. So you you have between 100% and 0% aiming down like this, and you can adjust the strength. So the the further down you aim, there you go. Sort of like half, not really halfway down, but you know significantly less power than the full strength ball, wherever that is now. Over here. So much less distance. Uh, and can you measure that? Well, you can measure, you know, the distance of a ball hit. If you wanted to create a sort of a rig. Or you could do it with like a, a puck sliding on ice. How far that goes. But it's sort of the same concept as like a wall. And uh, I don't have it in my inventory or whatever, but uh, just like a piston that you would put out here and extend it all the way. But like use the smart engine controller to make it a very weak piston with no spring. And then another hitting thing right here. Because the piston only goes uh, linearly one way. So even if you hit it up, down, left, right or whatever, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go to the left. It's only gonna use the component. Like in the same way that aiming down lessens the force. Uh, hitting something on a piston. If okay, how, how do I explain this? How do I explain this? If I'm facing this piston, uh, you know, imagine that these glass blocks are a piston. If I'm facing this piston and I hit this, 100% of my hammer hit is going into the piston, and it will compress, right? If I hit it this way, 0% of my hammer hit hammer hit is going into the piston. It's going like. In a, it, it, it's not affecting the piston anyway. The piston's not going to compress. Even though the thing, the entire thing's going to like rotate because I'm hitting it with a hammer. If I go 45 degrees like this, that's where you're seeing half of the total hammer strength is going to compress the piston. And then the other half is just like I was hitting it like this. Right? So like, it, it's very similar to this. Like, there's all different kinds of ways that you can measure this. But uh, strength basically comes to how lined up you are to a uh, to a like a, a super straight line in three dimensional space. But like, there's no way that I'm lined up like that, right? I can even show you how I'm lined up with compass and orient block. Tracking player. I think it's uh, like this. So this is the looking direction of the player in degrees. trying to line up with zero degrees right now or I could line up with 180 but like you're never gonna get the 180 right positive 179 negative 179.9 ne negative 179.9 positive 179.9 so yeah lining up like precisely on the zero you're never gonna do that you're never never gonna do that I mean Maybe you do, like statistically it's gonna happen at some point, but like not intentionally, right? So like, as, as, same thing with like trying to count 10 seconds in your head. Statistically it does happen that you land on 10.000. So like the true 100% efficiency of a hammer hit, you gotta line up your aim at exactly that .000 direction of the, of the thing that you wanna use that force on. Anyway. It's just a force vector which can be split in XYZ. Well, yeah, yeah, the smiley face person in chat. Um, 
there's just an exception in scrap mechanic with the downwards hammerheads. Like I tried to show with the balls. There's no actual downwards force calculated when you when you hit down. And I can prove that to you right now too, actually. Um, wait, can I? Yeah, I can. I'm just gonna build a thing with a... Sus. Very long suspension. And then just anything on it. And then make it super weak. But not super weak. And then hit down. doesn't really seem to be moving. You can tell by the shadow. The top of the block lines up with the surface of the wood there. It's just not moving down. But, let's use the same suspension sideways. Put a thing on it. One notch from the bottom. And we'll, I guess, I don't know, stick a block. How do I, how do I, just pay attention to the shadow, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Get my hammer out and just hit it. What? How strong is this suspension? This is supposed to be a weak... I'm definitely supposed to hit this in. I Okay, don't use the modded suspension to try to show this. this clear, clearly, I was set up to... I'm being framed. Okay, this... And this should definitely be hammer hittable. Hammer hittable suspension. What are you doing? How? How even? How? <sighs> Scrap mechanic. Anyway. Um, so yeah. Are you kidding me right now? Why? Why is this not allowed? <laughs> Why is this not allowed? How do you make a hammer button switch thing? What? 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 I'm, 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 I'm... Suspension. Block. Hammer. Hammer. Max. Min. Running into it. How the heck is this not compressing? When did this break? When did this stop working? What? <sighs> okay, so just suspension can just not be compressed by hammer at all? That doesn't make sense. How does challenge mode have boutons? See, now, now it's working. Now it's working. Okay. Okay. So you saw that working horizontally. Get flat. Okay. Still the same force. I'm pointing straight down. It's not compressing at all. Not at all. You can see the shadow on the wood. It's only the only the entire blueprint vibrating, but it's not actually compressing. So, <clears throat> pick this back up. Actually weld it. This was all just to actually prove for you guys. The hammer does have force. Oh, you know what? I can actually, um... Well, it, it's, it's not... Whatever. The... <laughs> whatever. The game... Okay. You, I, whatever. Just take my word for it. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's... So dumb. <laughs> it's just... Um, your player looking direction, if you're below your horizon, not the horizon, but like if your player's looking direction is below that zero degree line with your character, like I'm clearly looking down, right? 
so anywhere between down and up is straight. Anything below straight starts a reduction in your hammer power. It doesn't actually hit downwards, it just reduces the outwards force. You're, you can't you can't hit downwards. You can't hit anything downwards in the game. You know what? There's another way for me to show this. Prove this. Alright. Anti-gravity to the rescue. Anti-gravity to the rescue. Yeah, just some blocks. Some blocks will do. It doesn't matter. That's a block. That's a block. That's a block. That's a block. All right. So we're all in zero G. Okay, so you can obviously, I, I'm pretty sure you can obviously hit up full power. There you go. Horizontally, you can hit full power. There you go. Now let's go up here. And we're gonna try to hit this block down. Nothing but down, just straight down. I think I'm a little bit too far for my hammer to make contact. I just gotta be careful not to run into the block. Just get close enough without touching it. All right. Straight down. Nothing. Zero percent force. There is just no downwards force from the hammer. So let's angle this up a teensy teensy bit. And you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. It's only going to go horizontal. It's not going down at all. I did hit downwards. But that was just proportional amount of force based on the angle between my zero degrees and, and 90 degrees, right? Just between here and here, zero and 100% force. So that's a quirk of hammers in Scrap Mechanic. But aside from that one quirk, aside from that one quirk with the downwards direction, every other direction, you can still change your force. Uh, just like this hammer hit right here, just like I'm doing this. You see it goes in a little bit. But you can also just aim off to the side. Get a really, really steep angle here. You can see I'm hitting the, the, the surface, but it's not compressing anymore because the force is just not matched up with the linear direction of the suspension. Right? You gotta match up the, the two lines. The two lines of the linear linear suspension and your direction of where you're even pushing your hammer. Those two have to line up for the maximum potential of your hammer force. Or if you're playing golf, just remember to aim downwards. Like see this is a ball, this is a ball that rolls around, not very well, because I think the, the collision was broken, but it's a ball, right? Not perfectly straight down, but a little bit of an angle. And you got a, a weak hit. A weak little hit. And then you want the strongest hit possible. You want to crouch down. So that your looking direction is as horizontal or upwards as possible. And just hit. Bam! Maximum power hit. Very, very useful stuff to keep in mind. It's still going, actually. Get out of here. Block. <laughs> Let's see, uh, what else do I have? Durf I sent the creations in Scrap Mechanic? Oh, uh, I, you know, I might not check that out though. If you made a post in the forum channel and tagged it as a blueprint, I'll definitely check that out. But I don't always read every message in my Discord. I'm sorry, I just physically can't do that. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It's really ridiculous when people expect me to... To, to read every comment on YouTube, every message on my Discord, every message on everything that I've ever uploaded to the Steam Workshop. Like, oh my god. Is it <laughs> sometimes I get, sometimes I get crazy people. Like, they get angry at me for not reading the thing or something. 
this. <laughs> but it's because they think that I do, right? They think that I read everything. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me take a look at my notes here. I already built a, another game today. I'm just not sure if I was prepared for draining my brain this much today. Isn't there a Y plus? Just not... It, it, it's the Z axis. But yeah. Well, okay, I pointed that out. I pointed out the hammer thing because it's, um... Like, you understand how the suspension compression thing works, right? I'm matched up with the direction of the suspension, and over here, not so much, so it doesn't compress. And then everywhere in between, it's, like, a scale 0 to 100%. So that is like a perfect one-to-one -one analogy for uh, the negative direction the, the negative looking direction like hitting downwards with a hammer hitting downwards with a hammer is just all the time it reduces your force I yeah I don't know how else to really explain it all right I think to end things off today you know why I'm so uh, drained Mentally. I'm actually not drained mentally, I'm just... Parkour? Did I do this? I didn't do this. It's zero. You know what? I'm doing a parkour course. <clears throat> Benches? But yeah, I uh, started um, brushing up on uh, my Japanese. What? That was a weird jump that I had there. You just gotta go to the end. Sit on the bench. Gotta trigger the sensors. Okay. Stage one is pretty easy. Um. Is this just to trigger the sensors at the end? That's all the challenge is, huh? I think. Why is there a bench on top of there? <laughs> challenge is a little silly. I think I could just jump straight to there. Right? Maybe even straight to there. Parkour skill! Uh, but yeah. I'm, j I'm basically learning uh, Japanese all over again. Just for the sake of it. I never fully learned, like, okay, okay, the extent of the, the extent of uh, the languages that I know, because every now and then people are going to ask me how many languages do I know, and I, and I joke around, I'm like, oh, haha, I know like seven languages or whatever. That's not true. Okay, I cannot speak, read, or write seven languages. That's definitely not how that works. What I do know is very basic phrases and, and terms and stuff, or... Like, I listen to, to, to Ramstein, Ramstein, or however you pronounce it. And, uh, you know, the, the song, like, Du hast, Du hast mich, or whatever. It just, yeah, I, I understand the translation of that, because it just means, like, you hate, you hate me. It's not uh, that difficult, and I've just remembered that over the years. So I've done the same thing with, like, Japanese and anime. So, you know, I watch some subbed, subtitled anime. Um, I know... Well, I obviously know English, French, Portuguese, Spanish. Um, again, not really for reading and writing. I, I, don't, I wouldn't want to speak, read, and write French every day. There's nothing wrong with French. And I can I can speak French. Je m'appelle d'oeuf. You know, bonjour. <laughs> Je pucks. Parles. Uh, Francaise. <laughs> Just speak French in a way that like really pisses off the French. <laughs> uh, so yeah, like I, you know, as much as I can say like, oh, I know some German or whatever. I, I don't like it's it's not a, it's not correct for me to say that I speak German or anything like that. Like I obviously don't. Um. <clears throat> But I do have, I guess, a little bit of a head start compared to somebody that knows nothing about a language. 
Anyway, I started to uh, started started doing some Japanese courses. And oh my god. <coughs> And, uh, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, I, it start, starts off pretty easy, I guess. But, like, some of the things, I'm wondering, like, why the symbols even are what they are. And, like, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe it's a mistake to even learn Japanese and I should be learning, like, South Korean. Because, like, the whole, the whole thing with South Korean was, uh... It's an it's a engineered language, like they actually put in effort and science into designing language for usage. So, you know, in English, you don't really think about, like, why is the letter A the letter A? Why is the letter B the letter B? Why is the letter C the letter C? Like, why is it even shaped like that? And especially, think about it in the perspective of somebody trying to learn the names of these letters. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. None of the letters that sound the same look the same. I mean, I guess some of them do, but, like, there's no logic behind that whatsoever. And the same is true for Japanese, pretty much. Like, if you look at the characters uh, for uh, No and Re, then that's, like... Uh, well... Th it, there, there's so many instances of it, actually, but... Basically... <laughs> basically, it looks like there's very little logic behind the designs of the characters. And if there was a little bit more logic put into it, it would make learning the language significantly easier. Like, holy moly, significantly easier. But it's not a big deal. It's, it's not a big deal, because, like... <clears throat> why is W, W? You know, in fr the French actually call it double V, so they're actually calling it double V. They're not calling it W. It's, it goes by a different name in French. But let me tell you, English is probably one of the dumbest languages around. <laughs> like, English is... Really. Because, like... Oh, my God. Because, like, uh, for, in English-speaking culture, the N-word is a big deal, right? Like, oh, my goodness, it's the N-word. Whoa, 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 racism. Whoa. Right? It's a, it's a completely crazy thing that people flip out over. And understandably so. I'm not, I'm not arguing that point at all, okay? But what I'm saying is, you go to another language, and you try to ask them, what is a black man in your language? They're going to use the N-word. <laughs> like, that's literally the word in their language for black. They don't have a, a, a translation for the word black. <laughs> because... Well, if you just look at the Latin basis for where the term black, like the, like the color blackness came from, it's an N-word. <laughs> so, so all the Latin-based languages, when they try to say if anything is black, it's N-word. It sounds like an N-word. It's only English that people are freaking out over when people utter a specific word. But I'm going to tell you right now, um, the N-word is completely nothing. I mean, I, I know... Okay, wait, hold on a second. I, I, gotta, I gotta not accidentally cancel myself here. What I'm saying is, <clears throat> like... Okay, I've already said that I don't understand, like, why people are, you know, so... Get so uppity about stuff sometimes. But, generally speaking, that's just because I don't understand. From what I do understand about the whole N-word thing... It's that... It is a slur, just like so many other words have become a slur over time. Um, so, like, the slur part of it makes sense. Why that word is the slur doesn't make sense. It's literally, it could have been any other word. It literally could have been any word at all. How to create a slur is literally just get enough people to agree on its definition. You could make Baba Booey a slur right now if you wanted to. But, like, consider, um, you know, historically what was even going on between people, right? If you lived your entire life and you think people look the same exactly like you do, and then you go to some place and you see people look very different than you do, how do you tell the people back home what's different about them? Well, gee, they're, they, you know, 
their skin color is a different color. Well, gee, what color is it? Well, then you use the, the word to describe the color, <laughs> right? But, like, historically, that was a different word. But then you get into the whole, you know, history of the United States and slavery and all that, and how people are affected living those lives every day on a day-to-day -day basis. You will still call them the exact same thing because that's how you refer to those types of people, but it doesn't have to be a slur. Where the slur actually comes from is how people treat one another. Oh my god, how am I not making this jump? I gotta make every jump. I can't really climb at the end, right? Yeah. Oh my god. So it, it gets to a point where um, people are managing other people amongst themselves to talk about slavery, right? Like, you know, that's that's what happened. I'm not denying it. And, uh, and then in a very similar way to, like, the military saying, how many men are you sending over to this other country to fight the war or whatever, they don't use the term men in the term to mean gender, like gender identity men. They're sending men and women. Men is just a term used as a unit. How many human units that are soldiers are you sending over there? It's just a very quick way of saying that sentence. You just say, how many men are you sending over there? In a military context, that's not that's not assuming anyone's gender. That's not, uh, you know, an offense or anything like that. But somebody will hear those words and get offended. <laughs> On behalf of an entire... Like, it's so, it's so dumb sometimes. <laughs> the things that people do. So it's important to, like, understand where words actually come from. And, uh... Anyway, the, the whole, like, slavery thing. When, when people are talking about other people and they refer to them as like a unit like that you end up giving the, the the word that you use power to describe people in that way as sort of like objects it's very weird to try to describe it but that's the creation of the slur then back in those days slave owner would talk to like slave owner and say how many units of slaves do you have the, the you you know you didn't you they could have used any other word, but uh, it's... Well, you, you get my point, right? I'll, I even, I'll, you know, I'll switch over to another example to, like, really explain how dumb this, like, happens. This is, like, a, a mechanism of society, and it's dumb. People are dumb. It's the R word. The R word, which I'm, I'm going to utter on today's stream, so, like, hide your children, cover your ears if you're easily offended, right? But I'm going to make an utterance of the word, just so that everybody understands. The R word refers to retard, or retarded, if you're, you know, trying to describe somebody. Now, before anybody gets offended, what I uttered, well, I did, I did actually utter the slur, but, like, I'm not using it against anyone, so calm, calm yourself, okay? We're talking about why the slur even became a slur. If you look at old driver's manuals, like, I'm, I'm telling you, the language that people spoke literally was the R word from one person to another. They would use it like a perfectly normal word, and it's not meant to be offensive. So that's why I'm saying if you look up an old driver's manual, like, uh, like from hundreds of years ago, the driver's manual, ma manual, I can't say the word manual, the driver's handbook, handbook, <clears throat> from hundreds of years ago, will say a phrase like, the brake pedal is used to retard the vehicle. And that's, that's a correct statement, because the definition of the word retard, uh, I think it's actually coming from a French background, but it just means to slow down. To, to, to slow down, stop, slower, that's all that it really means. It doesn't mean that in... It has no... Uh, what, what am I trying to say? It doesn't have the implication that people are slower. The word just literally meant slower. That's all that it ever meant. Then, then you come around to early medical history where, you know, some, some parent is bringing in their kid and they're like, oh, what's wrong with little Timmy over here? And 
the doctor's trying to explain, like, in, in medical detail, and the parent maybe just, like, doesn't understand. So they're just like, well, you know, little Timmy's retarded. He, he's, he's a little slower than the other kids. It doesn't mean that, uh... Which, by the way, is... <laughs> was a huge, like, umbrella term, because there's so many reasons why a person learning how to be a person, functional in society, will fall behind in certain areas. And, like, there's so many reasons why that might happen. But back in the early days, all you really measured was, are you slow or are you fast? And that's it. So when you just describe people as slow, you would just call them retarded because that is the actual medical term to describe someone's mental capacity as being slower in the same way that the instruction manual would say the brake pedal is to retard a vehicle it's it that's all that ever meant then you go to now like the next scenario that plays out after that is like that parent takes little Timmy home or whatever and then they go to you know some some event where all the little kids are playing or whatever and parents are talking to other parents and they're they you know now a parent has to explain the medical condition to another parent what do they say well they just say the condition that the doctor said the kids retarded now <laughs> now you got all these other kids that are just being like oh little, little timmy's retarded i hope i don't catch the retardation i gotta stay away from little timmy and so you get end up people <laughs> you know f treating little timmy like he's I don't know, so, you, you, obviously discrimination, right? And other people that have never seen this before are gonna ask, why are you all avoiding little Timmy? And they're gonna s give the answer, because he's retarded. And so like, that's that's the slur right there. That's the creation of the slur. It, all, everything before that was not a slur. But as soon as somebody says the explanation for why discrimination is happening, that's the slur. And so then that's the thing that carries over to other people, where they go around and they will try to shame people for being retarded, because they I have identified that as simply a bad thing to be, and that's it. That's... And, and that's just generally the problem with, like, every slur that has ever existed ever in the history of forever ever, right? It's literally someone thinking that they understand the definition of the word, and then taking action based on that interpretation, which is wrong anyway. But, over enough time, with enough people agreeing on how the word is used to hurt others, then yes, society will say, hey, you can't be saying, you, you can't be using that, you're clearly doing something wrong to other people, stop that. Don't use the slurs. Slurs are bad words. Don't, don't use the slur. So that's what I'm trying to explain to you guys right now. There's a huge difference. Merely uttering the word doesn't make you a bad person. Merely, the, the, the word itself being uttered is not a bad word, right? You can even list your most disgusting words possible and, you know, just list them one by one, but that's actually classified as educational content because you're educating the world about all <laughs> of all those words. Ugh. Okay, I, you know what, let me just focus on this parkour thing for a little bit. I'm just gonna jump, jump, ju okay, not gonna jump. My point is, my overall point was that uh, English-speaking society is generally very, very stupid in the sense of how strongly it tries to enforce a social rule, which is based on them not knowing the word. It's so dumb. It is It is literally so dumb. If every one of those people that have to be told, don't use the slur, if they could just be educated on where the slur came from, the same problem would be solved. Heck, even future problems could be solved, because they, then they have, like, a basis to go on for other slur words, right? Sort of like a teach a man to fish type of thing. So yeah, to me, it's a, it really seems a little stupid how people even get all uppity about something. Gender identity, too, is also a little bit like... You know, I guess you're free to care about whatever you want to care about, but, like, for you to think that other people have to care about what you care about, too, is also crossing some kind of line. Like, 
where is the other person's freedom to not care? You know what I mean? Just because you do, doesn't mean somebody else is obligated to. Like, that's that's literally the same problem on repeat for so many other things. <laughs> it's, it, it's the same thing every time. Social politics is like the... It just it, it fosters stupidity. And it's because so many people are, you know, get all uppity. They just, they want to take action. They want to stand. Everybody likes a narrative. Everybody likes a story. Everybody likes to, to, to identify with a character, go on a journey, and have something nice happen. They also like the opposite. They also like a villain story. They want to, which is a lot of what I see in the scrap mechanic community. <laughs> how a lot of people really try to frame me in, in a bad light or whatever. It's it, it's not even that, because like every time that I question them, there's no straight answers about why they even think that way. They just want to think that way. People desperate, desperately want to fit characters into a story narrative. So things like a villain arc is exactly what people try to fit me into when, when they see some dumb thing going on between mod makers. Or a redemption arc, you know? All these things are, are something that is more easy to fit into somebody's concept of how they look at the world around them. Wasn't I talking about Japanese earlier? Jeez. <laughs> uh... Game Theory just did an episode on Trombone Champ. Maybe your vid on it will get a bump in views. Ah, eh, maybe. I don't know. I don't really expect... Uh, I never really expected a whole lot of views from that game. Also, I think that game got a few updates since, the, since I played it. So there's actually some songs that I never played before. I gotta revisit that again. Whoa. Read about Diogenes? Di Diogenes, isn't that the guy um, in uh, Bennett Foddy's Getting Over It? There's a lot of Diogenes philosophy references or whatever in there. But yeah, he used to flip people off to see what happens. When they got angry, he would be puzzled and wonder what he did, huh? Um, I don't, I, I, I don't remember anything like that. So he's a troll, basically. He would just go around trolling people. <laughs> Diogenes, uh, ancient Greek trolling. That's funny. You know, uh, I've tried to explain before. Hmm. I don't know if it's worth trying to explain during this stream. I already made this stream confusing enough as it is, but uh, I've sort of described myself as an anti-troll. Which, uh, every time that I've tried to say that to somebody, they've either gotten very angry at me, thinking that I'm currently trying to troll them, or that they don't understand, and that it's just trolling a troll, basically. They think is anti-trolling. But anti-trolling is very specific. Oh my god, I can't do this parkour course. So maybe I'll try to describe what anti-trolling is. <clears throat> I think everybody knows what trolling is. It's basically somebody that goes on the internet. You know, an internet troll and they go to give somebody a bad time, right? It doesn't, like, the specifics of how they do it doesn't really matter. There's all kinds of different ways people control each other, but generally speaking, I think that we can all agree it's somebody that's specifically going to either look to cause trouble or opportunistically react to, like, react to the opportunity to cause trouble. They're not necessarily looking for it, but like, hey, you know, pop right in front of me, might as well do it. So, more or less, yeah, more or less they're looking to pro provoke a negative reaction. They're trying, they're, they're introducing negativity. It's very rare that trolling results in positivity 
because people usually just call that a joke. So I that's that's what I wanted to sort of establish first is like sort of the, the definition of what trolling is. So anti-trolling. I try to uh, I try to describe to people as like um, oh my god, I just ran off. <clears throat> uh Okay, some people think it means not trolling. But not trolling just goes... If you had a scale between 0% and 100% of how much of a troll you are, then not trolling just means 0%. It doesn't mean anti-trolling, which is like negative 100%. Okay, that's that's what anti-trolling is. So you're not, you're not not trolling, you're actually doing something, but it's the anti of trolling. So when some people think that anti-trolling means, oh, you're just going to trolls, the internet trolls, and those are your targets, you're trolling the trolls. That's also incorrect, because that would be right back at 100% of the scale. You're back to trolling again. You just che you were specific about who your targets were, right? So if you're specifically targeting trolls, and you're trolling them, you're just a troll yourself. You're just picky about who you choose. So, anti-trolling... Dampening reactions? No, 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 no. Again, that's just... You're trying to mitigate the damage that a troll does, which I guess is close. You're getting closer to what anti-trolling is. So, again, go back to the earlier definition of... You gotta think about in internet trolls as they're looking to have this sort of, like, negativity. They're looking to do something negative to others or to a community or just to people in general. Anti-trolling... Dampening reactions is very close. I, I think it's more like um, negating those trolls' efforts so that the overall result is not negative. You ha it, it's it's very strange to try to be specific enough to specifically negate a troll when the goal of the troll is just for the the resulting negativity. But a troll themselves cares about all the little intricacies that they care about to, you know, I don't know, boost their ego or, or really... Because, like, to a troll, they care very much about how many times they slapped your bottom when they bent you over their knee and spanked you over the internet, right? Like, they, they care about how many times their hand made contact with your cheeks. Ah, uh, don't give the troll the reaction they are provoking? No. No, that's that's actually not correct. That's something that anybody can do. That's not what anti-trolling is. Anti-trolling... <clears throat> okay. For those that have seen the the comments on the mod pack continuation, you... Trolls are like acid and you need to be based. <laughs> that's, that's, that might be... That might be the most correct, but also just because of how funny that was. <laughs> that's, that, that is very true. That is, like, actually... Um, yeah, no, okay, so, like, for those for those that haven't seen the comments on the mod pack continuation, it's basically... Uh, it, it's basically, I was trying to talk to Nick. It devolved into the same mod pack drama because... Of reasons that basically summarize to Nick is on this power trip thinking that he's in charge of somebody else's mod meanwhile not having a clue of what's to actually do with that project so it's never progressing anywhere and then problems come up like language support and blah 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 and like this was all on my to-do list of what to do with the mod pack like I was I was going with my own project and there was still more to do but since the whole mod pack drama thing, like the, the the progression of the mod pack's development just stopped right then and there because I'm pretty much the only one that knows the the whole to do list of what would need to be done. Anyway, 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 somebody else, I think it was Shrew True, jumped into the conversation. Shrew True, I I also described this on my uh, on my comments to him, but uh, Shrew True was in troll mode. They were being a troll on the internet. And specifically was the part that I pointed out to them that they were in debate mode. So it literally doesn't matter what I said, they were ready with a rebuttal. 
So I literally could have said the opposite of what I meant to say, and they would accidentally argue my point for me. That's how, that's how easy to manipulate some trolls are on the internet. Like, you can literally say the opposite of what you want, and they'll end up saying the opposite of that, which is actually what you want. That would be a very simple example of anti-trolling, right? Where, where the troll ends up working for you be, through their own efforts. And they think that they're trolling. That's 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 really what um, that's really sort of what uh, what anti-trolling is. So like, if you look at the entire interaction on the comments, <coughs> if you look at the entire interaction on the comments, when True True first, um, I guess just like let themselves into the conversation or whatever, because you know it's public and and whatever. I saw the... I, I saw the troll, and, uh... Everything that I said from then on was... very specific to play on the mental state that Shrew was in. But also maintaining, uh... Every, uh main, what am I trying to say? Maintaining everything that I wanted to genuinely say to them. I was 100% genuine with Shrew. I was only ever telling him, like, you're just making a fool out of yourself, just just like Technologic Nick is. And in doing so, motivated him to take even more action. And that was precisely what I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> so, in my attempt to just be genuine to the troll, I... I <sighs> that, that was the anti-troll, because... The, the troll themselves ended up proving my words. I didn't have to prove my words. The troll did. That's the basics of anti-trolling. It's, uh, it's a little bit difficult to find, like, the very, very precise... Because, like, you can't break the rules, I guess is one way to... One way to phrase it. If you do anything wrong, the troll's immediately gonna find that as a, uh, as a smear in your credibility for anything that you say. So you actually, so you have to be, everything that you say in anti-trolling has to be correct, such that, uh, such that even if you were to ask the troll, they could not deny what is correct or incorrect without themselves looking stupid, right? So the troll then is in a position where they either have to acknowledge your credibility or sacrifice their own. Which means that it, it, it basically effectively removes any any attempt that the troll ever can ever do. Amateur trolls get confused easily. Well, it's not just amateur trolls. Even experienced trolls are not exactly used to dealing with anti-trolls. They're just used to dealing with their victims. So just about every troll gets confused very easily. And all you need to do is just know a tiny little bit of psychology. Tiny, tiny bit. Not even a whole lot. Or just be a troll yourself. Convert yourself from a troll to an anti-troll. Oh my god. Okay, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. <laughs> I'm not doing this challenge. Oh, let's see what the shoot game was. Durf, stop the dance. Uh, what? Oh, I, I didn't get a chance to read what you said, Yorit. Alright, I don't know if I need any of this stuff, but... Spud Gun? This is a shoot game, after all. Shoot game. We just got targets that are gonna... I see buttons. Targets that are gonna come up. I see more buttons. All right, shoot game. What? I didn't realize this uh, challenge had built-in music. 
Okay, so it's just a shoot game. I guess, um... Every floor? Ah. Yeah. Every floor. You know what? I can uh, cheese this. What are you doing hitting the guns? Okay, so the bots can also destroy the, the entire arena. I miss the days when you just pay a troll to pass the bridge. Heh. <laughs> Alright, so there's just a bunch of stages. The bots can destroy stuff, huh? Does that mean... That I don't think they can dig downwards. They can cut... What do these buttons on the outside do? Oh, that's not good, that's not good. Okay. So I think the button's on the outside then. Oh god. Gatling? Where's the shotgun? Fine, I'll take the Gatling, whatever. But here's what I'm thinking, here's what I'm thinking. Another form of cheese. Just mash this button. And jump on. Hmm. Didn't go up. Didn't go up any higher than that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> this is so... What am I doing? <laughs> oh, jeez. I don't know if I can hit that. There we go. Wait, is that a capsule that didn't open? No, I think it's just a random thing down there. All right. So I think this is pretty good cheese. I am basically gonna do this until the last level, and uh, and then what, I automatically win? I can't hit that button though. That is not good. Oh, there we go, got it. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, the music stopped, too. Can I seriously just not hit it? Come on, what is this? Oh. Maybe that's the end. I am clicking the button down there. Hmm. I don't know, it's a little bit too many tape bots for me to for me to handle. But what's the worst that's gonna happen? I'm gonna I'm just gonna Oh, there's another chest, there's another chest. Alright, I'm going for it. Oh my god, instantaneously they're all coming after me. There's a shotgun. Wait. I don't have health in this challenge? What was I worried about this entire time? <laughs> Alright. Whatever. Interesting, interesting shooting game. I think the other one that I played was maybe uh, designed a little bit uh, better. Whereas the... How do I... I gotta play one of these games? Oh. Well, at least the bots didn't destroy it. Oh 
my god, I'm not gonna make it. I made it. <laughs> All right. Well then. You don't have health, but the arena does? Oh, I guess so. All right, well, I think I'm just gonna leave it there for today's stream, folks. Just, uh, yeah, just chilling out. I've been taking it really easy a lot lately. Also, because I'm, I'm relearning Japanese. Oh, yeah, to the person that was asking how much Japanese that I know, I know how to say some colors. I know how to say some words. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I know how to properly form a sentence yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm still uh, like a little kid in school learning how to read and write. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe by this time next year, you might hear me speak in Japanese. Anyway, let's, uh, let, let's, let's get rid of this. I'm out of here, folks. I'm, I'm, you know what? I think I'm gonna go do some Japanese lessons right now. But, uh, also, I think... Well, uh, you know what? I'm gonna... Nah, you know what? I'm just gonna end the stream there. I wasn't gonna... You know, okay, fine. Fine, I'll share with you a surprise. What surprise? Nah, never mind. I'm not gonna share it with you guys. Just know that I'm gonna be playing some, uh, some games. I'm gonna try to bring up the more content more and more. Oh my god. I'm having trouble speaking. I'm just saying that I've been taking it easy at the start of 2023. I want to ramp it up back up again. And you might see some more daily live streams if I start, like, on yet another Scrap Mechanic survival series or play another game. I might uh, start streaming every day at that point. But uh, not, not quite yet. We're getting there. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for your support. I'll see you guys uh, next time. Hopefully before next weekend. Bye, folks. Have a nice day. On me. That nice day is on me. You can have that nice day for free. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to trade in a bad day. You can just have a nice day. It's on me. Have a nice day. <laughs>